Um, the question of metadata, I'm going to pass over fairly quickly, but point you all to a uh, paper that my colleague wrote for the Chronicle of Higher Education, Jeffrey Nunn, though, about Google as a metadata train wreck. Uh, there he pulled up just series after series after series of things that Google had got wrong. Now, what's interesting in that, I'll mention this again later, he got vilified for that, not so much by historians, very much by librarians. The people who thanked him for it were actually people there, as I mentioned, both Dan Fancy and John Oldman at Google, thanked Jeff for pointing to the fact that they had these millions of metadata errors in their data. Um, so they took it seriously. One of the things you got wrong, well, masses of mis misidentification by title, I'll refer to one of those later, masses of misidentification by author with Henry James writing, writing Madame Mowbray, masses of mis mis misidentification by classification of Thomas Brown's urn burial classified under gardening, and masses of, <laughs> masses of misidentification by date. So that I was delighted to find that I had written a book published in 1879. <laughs> you may wonder how I may remain looking so young. That last point, of course, it seems to me, is critical for historians. What do historians have going forward with it isn't dates? And if you mess up dates, <laughs> you guys, you haven't got a lot left. Okay. So, is it surprising that they went down this road? Well, no, I don't think so. I remember Hal Varian talking to me in 2004 and saying, we're going to scan books. And I said, well, which ones are you going to scan? I was able to scan every one of them. That will resolve all the problems of selection. That's probably not a very good way to begin. And I think that Google themselves, talking to people at Google, and I've not met Brandon before, but talking to other people who work on Google Books, my sense is that they'll never say it publicly that they took on a lot more than they realized that they were taking on. Uh, another thing that I discovered, and I had this both denied and confirmed by Google, that I talked to a lot of the early libraries, the first six libraries that were working with Google. When Google came to them, they asked for the books, and they were offered metadata. And Google said, we don't need metadata. That's library stuff. We can do it with algorithms. Well, in fact, they tiptoed back a little later, as Dan Patsy had pushed Will and Pitt and said, actually, well, that had stuff called metadata. Finally, we had a little of that and, and took it away with them. To do away with, algorithm, with, with uh, metadata, you need, as Dan has suggested, very good algorithms. I suspect that's not enough, but you need very good algorithms. And Google has a bunch of those, because people like Brandon are enormously intelligent people. But you also need to understand the problem. And my hunch is that Google didn't understand the problem. Um, because that, in a way, is what scholars do. And if you push that plenty to the wall, you say, yeah, well, we don't really understand that stuff. And you want to say, well, why didn't you talk to scholars? And one reason, I think, is that librarians stood as a kind of proxy in between the two, and that wasn't very helpful. So what is the issue, in a way? I think this is it. What we have gone out of Google Books is a splendid, wonderful, fascinating, brilliant, irreplaceable, marvelous, fantastic, can I say it again and again, bunch of books. But it isn't a corpus. That's a huge difference. Because if we're going to invest in the library of the future, that's what we want. We don't simply want the old library with breath running over it. We want something a little more adventurous than that. And we haven't got that yet, I think. So my way, I think, of thinking about what went wrong is to quote from the, the admirable George Bush and say it was a case of misunderstanding. <laughs> um, I think that they didn't really understand what the problem was, and some evidence for that, other than things like Hal Berry describing the project before it got underway to me. When Jeb Number, my colleague, was actually describing some of the, the rotten metadata in Google, a librarian stood up and said, a senior librarian, and said, don't worry about our broken metadata, you can find that book another way. And when I made a few remarks about Google Books, and Jeff as well, in fact, a rather sort of critical historian who dislikes almost everything I say about Google wrote online, um, Google Books is wonderful. It saved me many a trip to the library and a lot through internet, uh, through internet uh, interlibrary loan. And I hung my head. And I thought, if that's really what we've invested, huge resources, because libraries have invested, not just Google, and all we're getting is a way to save trips to the library, the odd serendipitous finding on search, that's a pretty sad outcome. Because, as I think others have argued, this is probably a once and for all scanning. 
Put the down plants into the wall again, and you will admit, though you have to push him quite hard, nobody is ever likely to take this task on again. Google has squeezed that space out. Okay, so it's also starved a lot of other scholarly endeavors. I've talked to major research centers with a huge amount of money whose directors are saying to them, give up that scanning, Google is doing it. So people with particular domain expertise are actually being told to stop because a bunch of people who have no domain expertise at all are going to do it better. And in fact, if you look in the, in, in the Google settlement, one of the things they're claiming is they're going to start building on the fly sub-corpora so that they can actually sell these to libraries at a slightly lower price. So they're going to decide what is a domain, what's a topic, and what are the books inside it using the metadata they've built. And that, again, to me is a pretty worrying concept. The other thing I think we have to worry about, while I seem to be so critical, is also that Google might give up, and then we're left with a half-finished project badly executed, but nobody else willing to take on. And I say that because, and Brandon again may well deny this, but if you look some of the people at Google in the eye,